On July 20th, 1973, Bruce Lee died tragically at the age of 32. The official cause of death, a fatal reaction to aspirin. On tonight's mystery, Bruce Lee's surviving brother has questions about what really happened. How did Bruce Lee die? Was it truly a simple accident? Or did gloomy forces play a role? The world has long wondered about the tragic death of Bruce Lee at the age of 32, with whispers of his success disturbing dangerous enemies. For decades, one man has gripped to the truth. Chuck Norris, Lee's trusted friend and martial arts confidant. Until now, Norris has kept silent about the true events surrounding Lee's passing. However, in a surprising turn of events, he has broken his promise to recover a shocking truth that challenges everything we thought we knew. Was Bruce Lee's death an unfortunate accident? Or was there a threatening plan hiding beneath the surface? Norris's announcement tells Lee's final moments, exposing secrets that have been buried for far too long. This disclosure not only shivers the foundation of Lee's legacy, but also invites us to re-examine the circumstances of his unfortunate death. Join us as we delve into Chuck Norris's revelation, uncovering the startling truth behind the legendary Bruce Lee's tragic end. Witness the birth of a legendary friendship that transformed the world of action sports. Two legends, one unbreakable bond and a friendship. Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris are like two superheroes of martial arts, united by their passion for fighting and their persistent pursuit of greatness. But little did they know that their opposition was just the beginning of a lifelong brotherhood that would take them to new heights. At the 1967 All-American Karate Open Championship in competition, their friendship reached heights where Norris emerged victorious and Lee showcased his innovative techniques. But what really caught Norris's attention? Lee's humility and generosity as a teacher a rare quality in the cutthroat world of martial arts. This crucial experience marked the beginning of a lifelong bond between two martial arts titans. Bruce, the creator of Jeet Kune Do, introduced Norris to his innovative style, which combined the fluidity of Wing Chun, the violence of boxing, and the power of wrestling. Jeet Kune Do highlighted movement, adaptability, and person's expression, a game-changer in the world of martial arts. Norris was deeply impressed by Lee's humility, and he quickly absorbed the principles of Jeet Kune Do. But what Norris didn't know was that Lee was also learning from him. In return, Norris shared his expertise in Tang Soo Do, a Korean martial art that emphasizes powerful kicks and strikes, which he had honed during his time as a military policeman. Further, their bond solidified by the reciprocal exchange of knowledge and skills both on and off the screen. The real question lurks here. What secrets did they uncover in their training sessions? Stay tuned. In 1972, Bruce invited Norris to star alongside him in The Way of the Dragon. The Dragon. He said, would you come over and do the fight scene with me? I said, well, do I have to lose? He says, yeah, you have to lose. <laughs> so I said, I, said, I said, all right. So I went over there and, I, and you know, I'd seen his first two movies. I said, you know, the guys you fight don't even have a chance. I mean, they don't even touch you, mm -hmm. you know? And he said, no, no, we'll make this a seesaw battle an innovative film that showcased their unique styles and camaraderie. The climactic fight scene in the Coliseum remains one of the most iconic moments in martial arts cinema, with Norris and Lee exchanging blows, displaying their mastery of their craft. But what made this fight scene so special? Let's dive in and find out. New revelations shed light on the mysterious death of a martial arts icon. Chuck Norris, a close friend and training partner of Bruce Lee, shares shocking insights into the events leading up to his tragic passing, a gripping account of a legend's downfall. Chuck Norris, a martial arts legend friend of Bruce Lee, recently shared his insights into Bruce's shocking, shocking death at a San Diego comic convention. As someone who knew Bruce on Fortune, Chuck's perspective sheds new light on the events leading up to his passing. According to Chuck, Bruce's endless practice for physical perfection might have been his undoing. Bruce's commitment to pushing his body beyond its limits was like heroic. In 1968, he suffered a severe back injury while performing an exercise, resulting in a ruptured disc in his spine. But, despite medical advice to slow down and recover, Bruce persisted in his intense training and diet. His refusal to heed warnings and his efforts for physical prowess may have ultimately led to his downfall. Chuck speculates that Bruce's has hyperactive metabolism 
therefore consume excessive amounts of protein, vitamins, and supplements, potentially forming dependencies on these substances for energy. Additionally, Bruce's dedication to detoxification led to extreme water consumption, with reports suggesting he drank up to 10 liters a day. While hydration is crucial, Bruce's excessive intake contributed to his health complications. But how? Move in. 1973 in Hong Kong during preparations for his film Game of Death, Bruce experienced a fatal combination of medication and substances. Actress Betty Ting Pei, Bruce's collaborator and rumored mistress, unknowingly administered a painkiller containing aspirin, triggering a deadly reaction due to Bruce's allergy. Chuck suggests that this lethal mixture induces cerebral edema, a condition where abnormal swelling of blood vessels in the brain restricts oxygen and blood flow, potentially resulting in death. This theory underscores the difficulty of disregarding one's physical limits and the unforeseen consequences of substance interactions. Chuck says slowly, sorrowly, Bruce's demise serves as a sad reminder of the delicate balance between physical ambition and health preservation. Don't miss the next part of the story as we move deeper into theories of Bruce Lee's death. The tragedy surrounding Bruce Lee's death is addressed by a multitude of theories, each attempting to uncover the puzzle of his untimely death. While Chuck Norris's perspective was just one side of the puzzle, another theory stands out for its threatening implications, the claimed involvement of the Triads, a powerful Chinese criminal group. What could have driven the triads to target Bruce Lee for assassination? One motive points to Bruce's disruptive picture of Chinese martial arts on screen, which reportedly unsettled traditional Sifu masters in Hong Kong affiliated with the triads. His innovative Jeet Kune Do style was seen as a challenge to established customs and arts. He said, I want to do a movie now with a fight scene that's never been done before, and I want you to be my opponent earning him adversaries within certain circles. Additionally, the triads reportedly attempt to maimize on Bruce's excessive wealth from blockbuster films. When he resisted their demands for a share of his earnings, he became viewed as a threat to their criminal interests. Another perspective suggests Bruce's romantic involvement with triad-affiliated actress Betty Ting Pei may have fueled jealousy and bitterness among her connections. As the theories continue to blow, one thing remains clear. Bruce Lee's enduring legacy continues to captivate and inspire audiences worldwide, leaving an indelible mark on both martial arts and cinema. Despite the sinister forces that may have tried to silence him, Bruce's impact on the world remains as powerful as his legendary kicks. Theories surrounding the triad's claimed involvement in Bruce Lee's demise continue to swirl, with some wondering that they utilized his known allergy to aspirin by knowingly consuming his drink with a lethal dose. Others propose a more elaborate scheme involving a carefully planned murderer. But the theory that stands out for its chilling implications is the potential use of Dim Mac, an ancient martial arts technique also known as Death Touch. This method targets vital pressure points to inflict internal damage or incapacitate the body. Some theorize that the triads may have enlisted one of Bruce's former pupils or rivals, skilled in Dim Mac, to administer the fatal blow. It's possible that they may have supplemented this with poisoning or drugging to give Bruce more resist. The circumstantial evidence supporting this theory is unsettling. Reports of death threats directed at Bruce prior to his death, unusual marks and needle marks on his body, and the suspicious deaths and disappearances within his inner circle. The mystery surrounding Bruce Lee's death is almost fully revealed as the puzzle pieces start to fit together. The question on everyone's mind is, is the world prepared for the shock that may follow? The triad's involvement adds a strange layer of interest to the mystery, and the potential use of Dim Mac raises the concern even higher. The legend of Bruce Lee will live on forever, and the truth about his premature death will only deepen his legacy. Another theory covering the thrill is the Lee family curse, a supernatural legacy that supposedly afflicts the family for generations. This ancient hex was said to cause male members to die prematurely, often under violent or strange circumstances. The curse's beginnings can be traced to feudal China, when two notorious military general ancestors caused trouble by upsetting certain people. A widely accepted narrative posits that the curse originated from a cruel sorcerer's hex placed on General Li Yuan during the Tang Dynasty. 
Li Yuan, a ruthless hardliner, turned on the agitator to protect the emperor's rule, earning the friction of a powerful black magic practitioner united with the revolutionists. On his deathbed, the sorcerer vowed that Li Yuan's bloodline would forever be cursed, with no man living past 33 years old. Some believe the curse traces back even further to General Li Sun in the Song Dynasty era, who failed his emperor and sided with the invading Mongolians. As revenge, the emperor's royal wizard damned Li Sun's descendants to die by fire or metal. Due to the lengthy line of tragic events in the Li family's past, many people think that the male members of the family are cursed. Bruce's parents were convinced the curse was real after losing their firstborn son under mysterious circumstances. To protect Bruce, they made him wear girls' clothes and pierced his ears at birth, hoping to disguise him from evil spirits. They avoided using his birth name, Jun Fan, fearing it would attract the curse. Was Bruce's destiny predetermined from the outset, as the proverb states, the sins of the father are visited upon the son? As Bruce grew up, his parents consulted fortune tellers, who predicted greatness and glory, but also a short, difficult life. The curse seemed to strike again when Bruce died at 32, just like of 33. The strange circumstances of his death added to the belief in the curse. He passed away in the year and hour of the dragon, the sign of his zodiac, and on the hottest day of the year, with a temperature of 93 degrees Fahrenheit. His wife Linda believed Bruce had a feeling of his death, sharing a haunting dream with her just days before. Bruce's writings and films hinted at a supernatural struggle. The iconic mirror scene from The Way of the Dragon showed Bruce performing intense movements, apparently to be a symbolic battle against evil spirits. Whether you accept the curse or not, the history of the Lee family is unquestionably characterized by a string of odd, tragic events. The question remains, was Bruce's fate sealed by a centuries-old curse, or was it just a series of unfortunate events? The circumstances surrounding Bruce Lee's death on July 20th, 1973, are astounding. Bruce died in the year and exact hour of the dragon, his zodiac sign, and on the hottest day of the year, measuring 93 degrees Fahrenheit. It is as though fate was writing a twisted script. Having shared a disturbing dream with her only a few days prior, Bruce's wife Linda felt he had a premonition of his impending decline. As though he knew his time was limited, he spoke of his vision with a solemn certainty. But that's not all. Bruce had also spoken and written about feeling tormented by an evil entity or spirit evocating him. The strange circumstances surrounding his death, combined with parallels weird things between his life and his ancestors, led many to believe in a family curse. And when Bruce's son Brandon died in a similar tragic accident, the supposed curse gained even more momentum. Brandon's death was a tragic echo of his father's fate. In 1993, a prop gun misfire on the set of The Crow claimed his life, similar to his father's death from an unexplained brain edema. The coincidences were too numerous to ignore. Both died young, both died under strange circumstances, and both were on the verge of achieving great things. The timing of Brandon's death added to the misfortune, passing away just days before the release of the biopic Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, which told the story of his father's life and death. The bizarre and awful coincidences that have marked the Lee family make us wonder, is the curse real, or is this just a string of bad luck? The Lee family curse remains a legend, but its impact on the family's legacy is undeniable. For those who believe, the supposed generational curse has cast a long shadow over the family's bloodline, one that may never be shaken. The tragic deaths of Bruce and Brandon Lee serve as a reminder of fate's power and the lasting legacy of a tragedy-stricken family. Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, was destined for greatness, following in his father's footsteps as an actor and martial artist. But fate had other plans. During the filming of The Crow, a prop gun misfired, striking Brandon in the abdomen. The prop gun was supposed to be a harmless replica, a tool to add realism to the film. But on that fateful day, it became a deadly weapon. It changes the course of history. He died shortly after, leaving behind an unfulfilled legacy and a family in chaos. When Bruce Lee died mysteriously at age 32, 
Early reports said that 28-year-old Brandon's fatal shooting on a movie set last week was an accident. The news sent shockwaves through the film industry, leaving fans and fellow actors in disbelief. How could this have happened? Brandon was a talented young actor with a promising career ahead of him. He was the son of the legendary Bruce Lee and had already made a name for himself with his impressive performances in films. But here's the thing. Brandon's death wasn't just a tragic accident. It was also a symbolic passing from one generation to the next. In the biopic, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, Bruce is depicted fighting off a supernatural entity threatening him and his son. In real life, Brandon died just days before the film's release. It's like the universe was playing out a twisted game of fate, with the Lee family as its pledge. No one can imagine Lee's family position. Brandon Lee's death was more than just a tragic accident. It was a symbolic passing of the torch from one generation to the next. Brandon's performance in The Crow showcased his impressive martial arts skills, honed through years of training in his father's footsteps. He was a true master of the craft, and his dedication to his art is still admired by fans worldwide. But fate had other plans, and Brandon's life was cut short in an unusual accident that shocked the world. The outpouring of grief was immense, with fans and fellow martial artists paying tribute to his memory. Shannon Lee, Brandon's sister and Chuck Norris were overcome with grief. Chuck gave a moving tribute at Brandon's funeral, paying tribute to the young man who had shown so much promise. Brandon's rise to stardom had been marked by a string of impressive performances in films like Rapid Fire and Showdown in Little Tokyo. The Lee family's legacy continued to inspire even in the face of tragedy, and Brandon's memory lived on through the countless lives he had touched. In the end, it was not the curse that defined the Lee family, but their resilience, courage, and determination. They had faced tragedy and come out stronger, their legacy a testament to the power of the human spirit. Brandon may have been taken from us too soon, but his memory will live on, inspiring future generations to pursue their passions and never give up on their dreams. As Shannon Lee said, Brandon's legacy is not just about his films or his martial arts skills, it's about the impact he had on people's lives. He may be gone, but he will never be forgotten. The Lee family's story is a reminder that life is precious and that we must cherish every moment we have with our loved ones. It's a story of tragedy and triumph, of sorrow and strength, and of the enduring legacy of a family that refuses to be defeated by adversity. So let's remember Brandon Lee, not just as a talented actor and martial artist, but as a symbol of hope and inspiration for generations to come. If you like this video, please like the video and subscribe the channel to uncover more hidden truths.